today I'm going to talk about a, a small implementation uh, which was done in JavaScript and uh, it came for actually came for a code review and then we just uh, applied very basic principles. I would not even say it's FP principle, it's applicable even for others. But um, yeah, a uh, few of the very basic stuff and then how did the application design evolve and it's kind of um, started and how it, how it kind of made it more modular and how we could, you know, just add features on top of it, like incremental features on top of it. This was a 45 minutes talk which I planned early, so now I'm just condensed it to 20 minutes, so I'll just go a little bit faster. So I'll skip this. Okay, so this is again like, so I'll not be going into details about the design and architecture of design stuff and what really happened. So just go through the entire flow of what really, uh, the changes that we, uh, that, that, that we went through. So this is the app. So it's a kind of a messaging adapter. So we have this, uh, I don't use the real name, so it's like some kind of a free messenger service in the cloud and there is an enterprise messaging. So you want to bridge these two, like there are some users from outside needs to be able to reach your enterprise users. So this, so the, the, the adapter, that's, that's the component which we built, which enables us to you know, bridge these two messaging and the signaling part of it. So that's, that's the subject of this discussion. And of course I talked about, this is, this is, this is running on Node, this adapter. And this is what it looked like uh, when we finally said we are done. And we are done in the sense this came for the review, like uh, completed the implementation, it came for the review. That means it's a all, all it's like one, one, one node module which uh, embeds a glue to connect to that FM or the, the messenger service in the cloud and it does everything. Like it reads its config, it uses it, it bridges the messages, it bridges signal, it does everything. It talks to the enterprise, so it's all in one. So it talked to it got the messages from the FM and send it to it enterprise and the reverse direction, right? Sig signaling and this stuff. So it's a single module which does, did everything. So I'll, okay, I'll skip this part now. We have challenges around display. So I'll, we'll, we'll go through that at the end, like uh, comparing the, what was there initially and what, 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 what the end product. So what did we do? The, it's the very first step. So it's, it's pretty, I think it's straightforward, like it's doing a lot, too many things, right? So it's, it's not just doing one thing, it's doing too many things. And so you decouple what the interactions that has to do with that free messenger service versus the interaction that has to do with the uh, enterprise messaging service. So it's at a higher level function, to see by higher level capabilities, you make that more modular. So again, there is really, really no that thing, FP here, it's a general practice. So what it created is these two, probably you could call it a sub modules or something like that, where in which all the um, FM part in one end and all the AM, PM part in another end. And the distinction here it is, it's community, they are, they are exchanging messages. They, they don't like, FM really does not know what, what is happening. So it just sends the message to EM. It does taking care of, you know, talking relevant APIs onto the enterprise messaging service. So there's no, it's totally decoupled and the, it is the, the interface between them is data. That, that is the message that is that's being sent. Oh, it's actually a recipe client, yeah. <laughs> it's an EM client. <coughs> so next step. So this was the first step that we did that. And the next, what we did is, if, if, if you see the previous image, this has like a config, FM glue. So that, those are all like mutable state which is at the global level, like if config changes, my global state changes. If I need to support another uh, set of credentials or another uh, messaging service, my FM glue changes. No, it's, 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 so it's, it's at global level and it could change. So what we did is we took that out and of course when you take that out, you add it as a parameter in various functions that needs it. So parameterize the functions and Another point which we did is wherever possible to a limited extent, we made some of the functions pure, like all the side effects syntax and stuff take, uh, took it out. Not to the full scale, but certain part of it. 
So that gave us this, where in which yeah you have some entity which is kind of trading the config, it's creating the glue and then passing it on to your actual module. So it's it's these are all like injected parameters. So I've shown here only like the major ones, the actual changes are largely because it's a lot of functions are using these and several other parameters. So here again, it's essentially the most important thing is parameterizing the functions, that's all it is. And removing the global state. So that was step two. And step three, this is again very specific, but I thought it's a nice idea, I wanted to bring it out here. It's like use function instead of a value. So if you see that config, config was a value earlier, and we had challenges around in multiple places, like if that config changes, how do you, you know, kind of handle those changes, propagating the changes to multiple places and all those kind of things. So what we really passed on is actually not a config, it's a function, like you invoke it and you get a config. So that kind of took care of like, uh, you know, at any point of time if config changes, like every time somebody wants, wants a config, you'll invoke the function to get the latest. And the last one, we look at the actual part of the system that does stuff, right? For example, this uh, FM or the messenger service invokes web hooks, that means so you have some API endpoint defined, so that's those, and those are IO. And similarly to the enterprise messaging, you have to invoke API, this is essentially the REST API client, that's again IO. So these are the part of the system which does, did real job. How do you make those parts pure? So we didn't want to do that, but then again, we were facing issues, or rather, our yeah, tests were not looking that good. I mean, like a lot of mocking, and we had to um, to to you know kind of validate various scenarios where the payload changes, the response changes. You know, the, to do it via mocking was a little bit challenging, or it was not straightforward. Somebody who who is coming and reading it out, it's 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 not straightforward. So we thought, okay, why don't we make that pure? So all side effects, wherever like you are making an API call, essentially in this case, there is no DB or a file or anything like that, or config reading is a file actually, were moved to a smaller part of your application. So that gave us this, where in which you have those pink circles, so that's, that's the part of your system which actually does all the job. So these are like calling it as effect runner, so that that, that does the job, rest all are pure functions. So if you had a, we had a, we had a uh, function like, you know, send message to user that was actually invoking an API with a specific payload and all those kind of things. Now it no longer does that. What it does is, it returns you a structure, a JSON or a message or a data, which say, which is given to the effect runner and say that, oh, the effect runner will know that, okay, for this data I need to send a, uh, I need to invoke the corresponding API. So to test that message, the test case is like, okay, you don't need any mocking for various in type of inputs. Okay, here is the message that I expect and here's the content. Again, some of these were done like, you know, to really trying out like if I want to um, move all this thing away into one place and then how does our, how does the application change? How do I handle error scenarios? How do I uh, handle, the, what, what is my response channel and all those kind of things. So with this, what we got was, so in the original implementation, we had this, there was one module, all the methods were doing some kind of, you know, the, the effects were actually all over the place. It's like typical uh, stuff where we have something, okay, send message, send, uh, receive message, uh, uh, add user, in case of, a, let's say, a group chat, like you were adding another user and all those kind of things. And you had a, there was a tight coupling between your external messaging service, that is in F form in this case, and the enterprise interaction because all are done from one single place. There is no decoupling. And it was kind of difficult to support newer one. Let's say if you want to, let's say, add WhatsApp or Facebook or any kind of messaging, it's, it's kind of difficult. You need to kind of tear apart things to get that done. Uh, more, yeah, more than that, uh, it's about what if your enterprise messaging changes? That's again, bunch of effort to tear things apart. So that's the last point. It's just kind of restricting only for one FM EM pair. That's for that use case, it works beautifully. It works beautifully. And that was the only use, use case we need to support. But anyway, uh, so that's that's what it is. But after the refactoring, of course, we don't have a no globally mutable uh, shared state. 
uh, as I told before, like the, all the effects are done only in those two effect runners, which is uh, which is like probably 20 to 30 percent of the code. And all these effects, like I need to do something goes as a data, like as a JSON structure, like what needs to be done. Uh, and it enabled testing the rest of the part, like except the effect runners, first all the modules, we could test it very easily. And it's kind of supported, it was very, I mean, we didn't have to make many code changes, okay, I need to support this additional service, or I need to support more than one, uh, you know, um, instances of this, like for example, your integration with your uh, third party messaging is through using one, one set of credentials, one account. So I need to support like multiple accounts that way, like that. It's essentially, you call the same function again with a different set of parameters, that's what it is. Okay, so now let's look at the you know, original implementation and what happened after refactoring. All right, so I'll I'll take I'll show like uh, it's okay. It's not that great, but still I think it's readable. Is it is it readable from the back? It's okay. Font size, okay. Okay, all right. So, so if you see the this is the original implementation. So we had one thing called add from route to the express module in the node which gave us the APIs and what it does is it reads a config and it says that okay, uh, it's at for a particular URI, it adds the route. So, but less rest of the intelligence is showed in this implementation of this FM route. So that's that's over here, FM. So this is again the original one of that. So here, if you see, so it's exporting this, of course the URI, uh, the initialization part of it, so this, so if you, this points to a thing like, okay, it's checking whether this is set and if it's not set, initialize. So this is the global state, right? So we'll check it. So that's, that's what it is. So this, this is global and it's kind of used in across all the methods and all the, all the functions over here are like directly invoking the corresponding APIs because this guy will do the actual API invocations. So send action, then text. So all those things are directly using the API. So that means all of the functions which are defined here are actually making uh, uh, API calls outside. Either to the outside world or to the enterprise, one of those. Now, yeah, th this is what it is. So two files, the one which did everything, the other one which actually you know, registered the route. Now, as for the f first step, what I told you, we separate out the enterprise part with the external part, right? So that created a new, new module. So this is like enterprise message gateway stuff. So this is again REST API client and the right wrapper around it. And the important thing is now, how did the application evolve, right? So now here, if you see, so there is, so now this is an example where we added two different channels, like one, uh, two different integration. This is one. This is the second one. It's just a test service which is running. Uh, so here, if you see, so what it what it did is, okay, it's initializing the channel. It's telling what type of channel it is, and it is providing a configuration. It's another function which, if when invoked, will give you the config of config for it. Similarly, for another one, it's again the same function. You're calling, oh, this is of type different, and this is a corresponding configurator. So if you go to init channel, so this again, yeah, so it so. It, takes the type and it gets the corresponding config and uses it. So that's, that's over here anyway. So essentially the, your initial um, uh, module which loads, which, which, which takes the different objects, the different data and then passes it on to the relevant functions. Essentially it's only the parameterizing the function that's, that's done over here. And here, yeah, so here if you see the exported functions over here, uh, what is it? Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, so it's an URI, it's an init, and it's with router. It, all of these things, it's passing all the parameters over here. 
and the interesting thing is okay we have something called do so in these modules and this do is the effect runner actually so do accepts whatever it needs to run and uh, any messages that it receives it translate to the corresponding stuff so if you see the effect runner so this is what it is so it's all the things are over here like sending the prop sending the text sending the button sending text message all the things are effect runner and how that is triggered is this one right it's like you get a message ah, for this message id this is what we need so another message this is what we need so another message this is what we need so that's that's it's actually the same concept even here where you have a dispatcher and says okay it's starting the chat request the chat so all the business logic stuff like if i need to start chat it will create a message called start chat and send it off over to the defect runner so this way it takes up it does the job any questions So, what that gave is kind of something like this, wherein which you have an outer layer which does all the effects. In this case, actually, there is no DB over here. In this case, it's just invoking APIs. That's what it is doing. But you have two systems invoking APIs, source and target, or two two different systems. And there is an inner core which is done fully using your functions. And these layers talk to each other over messages, data. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so there are there's a comp in certain cases these functions return the corresponding message. I'll show you that. So let's say this query mirror. All right. So now I'll go to this. This is the refactored stuff, right? So now here. So let, this is an example. Let's say start chat. Earlier, this was actually invoking, doing a bunch of stuff and invoking API. So now this guy is now actually returning this message of chat, uh, start chat with the data that is needed. So this is a very simple case, like I, I just need only two strings. Uh, so it is returning that particular message. Now let's look at whoever invokes this. So that will give us, so here this is invoking, okay, so let's look at this, whoever invokes this. So okay, so in this case, this handle post back in sessions. This was earlier doing all the work. So now it is returning, it, this guy is getting, returning an effect and it's doing dispatch effect. So dispatch effect, sorry. Yeah, it's, it will find the corresponding execute of that, for that particular effort and uh, send it to that. So I mean, now we need to run that. So this, so this, this, so in certain thing where it is not, it's all like sub function is returning some data. It's returning that at one place, it will send it to the uh, effect runner. 